Hey bro, what are you doing? I'm just swiping on Tinder, bro. Any luck? No. Why? Show me your profile. Well, what do you think? <laughs> okay, that says a lot, bro. You think I should change my photos? Yes. Do you think the way I look on Tinder makes any difference? No, bro, they all are there for your personality. Because what I notice is that beginner developers have like great personalities, love what they're doing, but their portfolios are shit. Maybe we can find a correlation between these two. Let me just change my profile pictures and we'll see if we have any more luck. So yeah. Bro, bro, come here, come here, bro. What happened, bro? I just changed my pictures, bro. And look at this fucking baddie. Boom. Match. Back. Jesus. We're having some luck on Tinder. Bro, send me your picture. <laughs> Jesus, this one is nasty. That's what you do if you want to have success on Tinder and if you want to have success on the job market, you have to have a good portfolio, guys. That's what I'm trying to keep explaining you for months, months or years since I'm on YouTube. You need to have a good portfolio, otherwise nobody gives a rat's about you how passionate you are how cool you are if you're not putting your best foot forward okay so now that i've destroyed tinder it's time for me to go and show you what you have to do to actually build a portfolio okay so see you in a bit today i'm going to talk about the road from beginner all the way to a six figures react developer so no matter where you are in your journey if you are just starting out today or if you have been having some experience with code, if you finished a bootcamp or something, I'm gonna show you the steps that I take with my clients personally and that you can possibly replicate and implement and pretty much make your life easier. If you want to transition from working in a boring job, maybe you are in a shitty nine to five or maybe you are flipping burgers or maybe you are making coffees at Starbucks and I'm gonna show you how to get a fulfilling job a job that's gonna pay you a lot of money six figures or more and I'm gonna show you how to get a job that you can pretty much do from anywhere in the world where you have an internet connection okay that's the point of uh, making this transition putting in all the all this effort okay so the first thing that I want you to do is you have to pretty much figure out what is gonna be your roadmap okay so you have to like go on the internet and try to figure out among all the roadmaps that are out there okay because there are a bunch of them there's free code camp Odin project you can choose one of them and you have to stick with it the problem with most of these roadmaps that you are seeing online is that they have a lot of unnecessary fluff so you have to figure out what works and what's needed and what's not needed okay uh, that's gonna be pretty much up to you that's gonna take you some time and what I'm gonna ask you to do is to not jump from one roadmap to another just because it's difficult for you okay you have to stick with it you need, you need to figure it out you need to grind it out you need to like do the same roadmap forever until you actually land that dev job okay the problem with these roadmaps that are online is that they're not customizable okay because you are not a developer you don't know exactly what you need so you have to pretty much rely on some random dude on the internet or some random group of dudes on the internet thought that is the best thing to do and it's not gonna match exactly how you are how your personality is how your learning style is you're gonna have some issues with that so you have to kind of keep in mind that that's gonna be an issue and it's gonna sidetrack you for a few months maybe six months maybe a year maybe two years you never know because how how long it takes for a self to developer to actually land that first dev job okay so also prepare for three years of struggle and frustration and a lot of headaches as you are trying to figure this thing out okay it's pretty normal usually when i work with someone it takes around six to nine months depending on where they are in what stage they are but if you are by yourself you need to have prepared yourself mentally to go through this for like three years okay so besides your nine to five or whatever job you might have you need to allocate an extra two three hours per day to actually learn code and to figure out what works and what doesn't for you okay something very very important okay the next thing that i want you to do is to join a bunch of discords a bunch of slack channels a bunch of communities on reddit on facebook follow a bunch of uh, influencers on twitter on linkedin and pretty much devour all their content so when that happens you won't even have time to code because you're gonna go through what they are telling you to do so for example 
you might have this guy that says do this and this and this you're gonna go to that content and you're gonna do exactly what that person does it's not gonna work and then what you're gonna do you're gonna go to another influencer so you're gonna see what that influencer recommends and then you do what that person says and so on and so forth you rinse and repeat for like three years and you get more frustrated and then when you have a problem you go into one of those communities that are usually filled with beginners and you ask them a question, okay? When you ask that question, a bunch of them will give you their own opinions, their own um, things that they've been struggling with, uh, but they don't know much, right? They are just giving you random advice that they kind of figured out. So you take that advice and you see if it works. If it doesn't work, you go back to them and you ask them, hey, why it didn't work? And they'll give you more uh, opinions and more advice, right? So you do that a lot of times and then you get a bit more frustrated, okay? But it's part of the game. That's what you signed up for when you decided, hey, I want to be a self taught developer or I want to go to bootcamp. So you do that. You get, you get that feedback from all these communities, from all these influencers, and then you put together a mediocre project, maybe like a Pokemon search app or like a movie search app or something like that. Make sure it has a bad design and put it on a website that looks like it's been made in 2002. All right, no design, no taste whatsoever. Say something about yourself. Say, for example, what you like to do in your free time, something that's not relevant with the actual job that you're gonna do as a front-end developer. Put there all your apps that you've been building so far. So if you have a calculator to do app, all those boring apps, put them in there because that's what recruiters want to see. So you do that and then you put together a CV, make sure it looks very fancy, make sure it has like nice pictures, it has some humor in there. Do that and then start applying for like 2000 jobs and then you're not gonna get any responses back. So when that happens, you go on the internet and then you start saying once again, Oh, this thing doesn't work. Recruiters are not on my side. Nobody's hiring juniors, etc., etc. And then you go back to your day job and you pretty much quit web development. Okay, that's kind of what people are doing. Uh, and if you don't believe me, look around and ask them. So if you don't want to do that, what you have to do is you have to be smart, right? The way you have to do it in 2022 is this. You actually need a roadmap. Okay, I haven't been joking with that. You actually need a roadmap. You need some sort of like game plan. You cannot just do random things and expect it to work. Like you've never seen a bodybuilder just getting jacked by chance. No? They, have a, they have a plan, right? Uh, today they're gonna do bench press, eight reps, three sets, and then they have to use a certain weight. Next time they have same amount of reps, same amount of sets, but they're gonna increase the weight a little bit. So you have to approach this whole thing like a bodybuilder would approach uh preparing for a for like a like a show right for a bodybuilding show you have to have your diet in check you have to have your training in check you have to have your sleep your water intake intake in check all that thing has to be taken care of you as a developer you have to have a roadmap right like today i'm gonna do this app then i'm gonna prepare these concepts and then in a week i'm gonna do this app and so on and so forth that's what you need pretty much um then the next thing that you need is to get feedback because you might be doing those things, you might be doing those apps, you might be building those concepts, you might be going through material that you have to go through to understand different things because you need to understand how like logically programming works, right? But then you also need some sort of feedback, right? So you need some sort of mentor, someone that's been better, that's better than you, that can show you how things work. Probably you can understand how this works, right? maybe you are if you are working in any kind of job you had a junior that came into your company and then you helped that junior get onboarded with different things maybe let's say when i was working in the coffee shop so i was teaching all the beginners how to make coffees and they were onboarded really really quick and they were able to produce the goods for the customer so imagine having that but for code it's very humbling in the beginning because you might put a lot of work into your applications you might put in a lot of effort into like all your details and then that senior developer is going to come to you, your mentor, and he's going to tell you, hey, this is absolutely terrible. You have to rewrite this. You are repeating yourself here and there. This could have been made simpler, etc., etc." You have to have that mindset. You have to be coachable. You have to have a very, very low ego. Okay. And then you have to build a portfolio app. You need just one app. Okay. Just one app. You don't even need a website. You need an app that looks good, that works well that looks like a complete product. The better that app is, the higher the chances of you getting hired will be. It makes sense if you think about it, right? 
if your skill set is good and if you show like a good product, people will take a risk on you because you are like a risk for these companies and you need to understand that. Nobody is against you, right? Nobody, and I mean it, nobody is against you. People need developers, but people need good developers, people that don't need training, people that can be onboarded quickly, people that can deliver, people that can be an asset instead of liability for a company. So you have to put yourself in the best position so you can become an asset really quick so a company can invest in you, okay? I was uh, talking with an ex-student of mine. He got hired like last year and I think he was making like 40 grand a year. Not much, but after three months, he got 80 grand. Why? Because he became an asset, okay? So imagine how your life would be with 80 grand or imagine how your life would be with 100 grand. What would you do? What would you do different? Paint that picture as you're going through this because that's gonna keep you motivated okay not the money necessarily but what you're gonna do with the money right programming is just a car that takes you somewhere but you need to define what that somewhere is so you can be prepared to actually put all the mental effort towards getting that first dev job okay so that's me i hope you like this video and i'll see you in the next one peace